right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined from Illinois by Larry Kaufman. How are you doing, Larry? I am fantastic, John. Delighted to be here. Yeah, and Larry's a best-selling author, uh, a keynote speaker on LinkedIn, networking, sales leadership. You're author of the book, The NCG Factor, and you have a global virtual and live LinkedIn public speaker and trainer for more than 12 years. So we're very excited to talk to Larry today about sales results without selling. Um, okay, Larry, let's dive into it. Sounds like, a, sounds like an oxymoron, right? Well, I, I think we all like to sell, and I think... Pre-COVID, we were very transactional. I've seen sort of a shift, you know, getting into more of a virtual world. We've started to cultivate relationships. But I always believe if you sell too hard, it's very noticeable by the prospect. And so I think if you develop and cultivate relationships, you could still have sales results, but they're going to stick and you're going to develop long-term relationships repeat sales with your prospective client. Yeah, because I think nowadays, I mean, uh, people people have become uh, more sophisticated, and I would say in some ways more defensive, so that uh, when you try to engage with somebody, I think they're a prospect or, or whatever, their, their defense mechanism is up very quickly. So how you approach them in the first place is critical, right? I, I thoroughly agree. I thoroughly agree. You're right. Yeah. So, what are when you when you work with uh, or advise people? How do you how do you advise them to build good networks, relationships, and be able to sell without selling? Well, so I've I've come up with my own quote. So, if you you lead with yourself, you leave with yourself. So, if you want to want to write that down, that's fine. But yeah, I'm going to you know, thank you. So, if you lead with yourself, you leave with yourself, and I think. It's very easy for a lot of sales folks. And, you know, John, you were, you know, running Huthwaite. I'm a big nail rack, I'm spin selling mm -hmm. fan. And and so what I would what I would say to all the folks out there, you know, don't show up and throw up. And it's really important to, especially today, to get to know the person that you're speaking with. And I'm talking personally and professionally. And I think we jump all to business. We just we can't wait to get to the business. And, you know, when you start to learn more about the people you're talking to and, and look, we're seasoned people, we're seasoned professionals and leaders, John. And so, you know, I know years ago, I didn't have LinkedIn. I couldn't go look on LinkedIn. Some of us look on Facebook too and other social sites, but I couldn't find out a lot about the people we're meeting with. But we have such a great opportunity to go delve into LinkedIn, look at our shared connections, do our homework, come in prepared and talk about that person and ask intelligent questions. And so if you learn about them personally and professionally, you could start to build deeper relationships and ask more thought provoking questions. Not all business. I think we all want to talk business. Yeah, I think that's a great point, Larry. And I think sometimes we get carried away and we get into it too fast. Or I think the other the other pressure that's on people today is because we live in this like instantaneous uh, um, uh, instantaneous shortcut culture, you know, of, of instant gratification, all of that. And, and I think sometimes people lose the patience to do the kind of prep work that you're talking about here and approach it in a more, in a more thoughtful way, because they're, they're just in this rush, 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 try and get things through as fast as possible. I agree. I think if we get to find out more about the people we're meeting with, their passions, their accomplishments, people, you know, people put things down on LinkedIn because they do want you to talk about it. You know, I, I, I really crave when people talk with me to see if they took the time to read my profile and ask me about certain things. And I, I strategically put things in my profile to test people if they took the time to do that research. Ah, that's a good trick. I mean, I wonder how many other people have, uh, have fallen down on that one. Uh, but the other thing, the other thing that I like, Larry, and, and your your book is, uh, as we said, uh, is uh, NCG networking, connecting and, and giving. Uh, I really do feel that 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 
obviously that was always important, but I think being through what we've been through over the last year or so, I think people are craving connection in a way that perhaps they weren't as much beforehand. And I think that whole idea of, of, of giving and being more, being more generous, I, th I think that, I think the timing for adopting a model like yours is really good now. Well, and, and I appreciate that. Thank you. I, I think this has been a great time to kind of rewrite our, our living legacies and rethink how we've been, you know, building relationships and to put the other people in front of us. And so to think about the other person and, you know, a lot of people have suffered, you know, loss, uh, financial loss, hardships with family, friends, and loved ones. And I, I think we need to be keen to that and to be uh, asking about how people have been impacted and how we could be helpful. And, and on the business front, if they've suffered a little bit and you're trying to cultivate a relationship, well, who are the people you call on as your prospective clients? And how can I help you with my relationship base? And that's going to shock people that you're, you're talking to them and saying, John, who's a prospective client for you? How can I help you and to grow your business? You know, that's unusual. But if you think that way, things do come back to you. And so I don't go in thinking I'm going to make that sale. It would be great. But if I go in thinking I'm trying to build a relationship and, and learn more about that other person, how I could be helpful, it will come back. And, and that has to be the thought process moving forward, in my opinion. doesn't mean it's everyone's. Yeah, no, no, I, I agree with you. And I think, and you touched on LinkedIn there as well. Obviously, yeah, you're correct. We didn't have LinkedIn, you know, years ago and all that, but I think the other part now is that, unfortunately, a lot of people are using LinkedIn to just spam people. And I think, again, it's 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 an unfortunate thing. So, again, how you start out the relationship is so critical, right? It really is. And I, I think, like you said earlier, people like to rush it. You know, they're 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 under pressure from their, their boss. I know I've got a I run sales and operations. You know, there are pressure to meet goals. But I encourage my team to, you know, cultivate these relationships, get take take time to get to know people. And even as a leader myself, I posture myself as being indispensable. And it's it's not a concept everyone talks about, but if I could posture that to you, John, say I, I want to be an indispensable resource to you at your company and what you do. And so you can come to me for what we do at Jefferson Wells, and that's great. Mm -hmm. But when you or a family member, a significant other, a client has something that surfaces that you've got to go to, so I can be your go-to and that indispensable resource. And that way we have more touch points. It's not all about business. And if you start to position yourself in that way, you will cultivate deeper relationships that will turn into sales and clients. Yeah, no, I agree. And how are some of the ways that maybe people could use LinkedIn better so that they can stand out from, as I said, from all these people who now think it's the greatest spamming tool ever, you know, with the, with the connection request, uh, a lovely, a lovely little note that's given to you on a connection request. And the minute you hit accept that, thing pops up with the automatic email with them trying to pitch something to you and all which really irritates me sorry i'm on my soapbox on that one but how can how can people stand out when when people have been kind of misusing linkedin as a spamming tool well and and i i see it i experience it personally i counsel people to not do it there's a lot of people hiring firms and using bots to do that automated mm -hmm. reach out and so i think one thing that we could do is when we go to the app on our Droid or our iPhone is to click on the three dots on the profile page. Don't send default messages, click on the three dots and personalize an invitation and be thoughtful. Just don't be the standard, John, we got some people in common and want to connect. You have to really be thoughtful. You have 300 characters to stress why you should connect. So if you're going to go that pathway, I truly believe getting introduced to the person you want to meet. If they're a second degree and you have 10 shared connections to vet out the 10, to find out who knows that person the best that could introduce you properly. And then when you get introduced, a lot of people put together very salesy introductions in the third person. And I don't believe in it. The other thing is how you branded yourself on your profile. Do you look salesy? 
And I tell people your profile, honestly, is not a resume. So if you do look at my profile on LinkedIn, I incorporate things about myself personally and philanthropic and things I do from workouts and health-wise and some other things that I put in there as a test to see if people are reading my profile. But maybe your seventh degree black belt that supports cures for autism. And that may resonate with the decision maker who has an aut autistic child or supports the same cause. So I think you should round yourself out because if your profile is all business and we do this and I do this, round yourself out. So those are some ways that could be really helpful. The other would be, you know, really develop a network of your clients and your channel partners, your referral partners, your trusted advisors, your centers of influence and develop a, a process or approach where mutually you're both helping each other by making introductions to some of your perspective, some of your current and prospective clients. Yeah, those are great pieces of advice. I love what you said about the referral piece, because I have to say, I can't remember the last time somebody uh, asked me to introduce them to somebody on LinkedIn or asked me, do I need this person? I think it's 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 not as it's not as common as it used to be because quite frankly LinkedIn have made it easier to just reach out directly um, to people. But I think your point is an excellent one. I think that's a very under leveraged uh, capability there. And as you said, it's far more likely to have a better result. But it just seems to be not used that much. Well, you know, I I, I talk to a lot of people, and I I always like to ask people, well, how do you secure new clients? You know, how do you go to market and it's, it's interesting that a lot of people don't leverage the current satisfied relationships they have. So what I like to ask people is, so John, do you have five clients that would do almost anything for you? You've just been great to them. They love the relationship and you've cultivated something beyond just a sales relationship. Do you have five that just love you to death? Yes. Okay, so whatever role they're in, if you were to look at their LinkedIn network, do you think they'd be connected to similar decision makers, similar types of companies that should or could be clients? Yes. Have you ever looked at their connections and maybe put down, you know, in a list, 10 of those or five that perfectly align? You look in your CRM, they're golden. You can go after it. How do you like that? So they're great to go after. I know. I tried to work that in, John. They're perfect <laughs> to go after. And if you you could call them up, you could take them to lunch and you could send them an email. You said, I have such a great relationship. John, hey, it's Larry. I just want to talk to you about 10 people. You know, hey, I'm busy. You, hey, we're talking. We go way back. You love me, right? Yeah, okay. Let me ask you about these 10 people. And we can walk through that list. You go, look, of the 10, I know four of those really well. Love to introduce you. And that's powerful. And even in that introduction, you'd say, well, you know, hey, this is, I'm a client of Larry's. I want to introduce you to him. He's wonderful. You should know him, an author, speaker, et cetera. Powerful and just such an easier way to get to your prospective clients. Yeah, no, exactly. But I mean, as you said, I mean, it takes a little bit of, it takes a little bit of work to do that. Like, and it'll put a little bit of thought into it. And that's what I'm saying. Unfortunately, it seems that we, we don't invest invest the requisite amount of time or, or thought in it. Um, what are some other ways that you think, you know, particularly emerging from the pandemic, what are some other ways you think that people can elegantly connect and, and network with people? Well, I mean, some of this stems from the fact that we are emerging. Mm -hmm. And if we truly stick to all Zoom and other platforms, we're not going to truly deepen the relationship. So thankfully we're coming out of it, but I think you have to have a goal and purpose when you go to an event or a one-on-one -on -one meeting, but there's nothing wrong with going to a one-on-one -on -one meeting, but also say, Hey, John, what do you, let's get together for breakfast or lunch, but you know what, how about you bring someone that's maybe one of your clients, someone that would align with someone I'd like to know, how about I do the same? So how about we double up? Not only are we getting benefit, mutually by you and I seeing each other, we're bringing two new people into the equation that could be prospective clients for both of us. So that is something that you could do. I just encourage people to start to emerge by getting out. It's okay to do a combination of the virtual, 
but have a goal and a game plan. And I also think if you're, if you're reaching back to the people you have true solid relationships with, some of your referral or channel partners or COIs to say, hey, John, let's meet next week. Look at my network, pick out five to 10 people you'd really like to know. I'll do the same. Or let's pick a bigger list because you never know with our networks over time. Let's increase the chances we're going to find a good, solid grouping of people that we could introduce each other to. And so those are a couple things that I think you could do that would be really helpful. Yeah, no, I think that's great advice because I do think uh, as people get back out there again, I do think the the bar is going to be raised a little bit on on proving the value of doing it. You know, now that we have uh, gotten used to virtual, I think there. So I think to your point, when you start to put together more valuable meetings like this uh, and spreading it out, I think now you have a real justification for doing it. I, I agree. As opposed to, I'm sure there's lots of people who just want to get out for the sake of getting out of the house right now. But uh, uh, as I said, I think companies are going to be a little bit more discerning in that and going to observe things a little bit closer before giving permission to go to go back out there. Um, and and Larry, just from your um, from your um, point of view, what do you think is the most overlooked skill right now? The most overlooked skill. I, I think it's the ability to build relationships. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I think we interview people to join our teams. John, let me find out about your network. Great. Um, do you understand this type of service offering or product that we market? Hey, John, why don't you give me some examples of how you've cultivated long-term relationships with your clients? And so I, I have to bring that up because that's a, a part of my book. It's the things that I talk about. And I, I'd like to know more when we're interviewing people or evaluating the people on our team who are not doing well, are they just rushing those meetings to try to get to a sale and then frustrating the prospect? So are we truly working with people on our teams that that understand how to build relationships. And that's a skill. And it, it can be taught to some, but some may just have built up this transactional selling process and they may never be able to get there. And that may not be the person you want on your team. Yeah, no, I love that. I think that's fantastic, uh, Larry, because I do think that relationships is key. It's overlooked. I think it's going to become more important um, than ever as we come out of this. And I think you're right. I think it's something that uh, needs to be learned and nurtured and practiced. And uh, yeah, so I totally agree with that. I think that's a great point. All right. Well, um, as, as we're coming to the end of our time, Larry, I just all of Larry's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Sure. So I always open up when I have a a face-to-face or over Zoom. So I would say to your audience, I'm a connector and a giver first and foremost. So I really do live my life to help others to be successful. I've been speaking, as you referenced, about LinkedIn internationally, uh, actually in my 13th year now. So it just, time is flying by. And, you know, I did author the book a couple of years ago in 2019. So doing a lot of speaking around the book. And then I work for Jefferson Wells. I run two regions and P&Ls running sales and operations for Jefferson Wells, which is part of Manpower Group, which is a $22 billion Mm -hmm. publicly held company. So we're really helping companies solve business uh, challenges and issues in the areas of accounting and finance, tax risk advisory, and also in business optimization services that we provide to those companies. So that's me in a nutshell. Right. And I, just, uh, I just love helping others. So that's, uh, yeah. that's me, John. Yeah, listen, and again, you know, thanks, uh, thanks very much, Larry, for joining us. Uh, great advice. I would absolutely encourage you to check out the book, The NCG Factor. Check out Larry and all his great advice. Uh, My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. I will see you all for another interview very soon. Thank you.